If you want to add custom rules to Violin, uh, we've made this as easy as possible for you to do. So we're going to look in this video at a very simple way of adding a custom rule. But we're going to go on later to look at more advanced usage of Violin where we can hook up Violin to our database and any other dependencies that we have within our project. So we can actually do things like create rules to check that a username exists in a database or an email address isn't already being used or something like that. So the uh, first thing that we want to do is go ahead and just validate. Uh, we won't do anything particularly interesting within here. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say username and I'm going to pass in just a hard-coded username and I'm going to say this is required. Uh, down here I'm going to do a var dump on v errors all and at the moment we shouldn't see any so we've got an empty array. Perfect so now let's go on to add our custom rule. Let's just create a silly one first of all just to demonstrate this and then we'll look at more advanced rules that we can create using arguments. Um, and you could also then create rules using previous input. And that's what the matches rule uses to check things like password and password confirmation. So for um, to create a custom rule, we just use add rule. It's as simple as that. We give it a, a rule name. So I'm going to say something like is Apple. So we're going to check this. This rule is basically going to check if whatever we pass through matches uh, the text Apple. Obviously a silly example, but it just shows how we can use these. So inside of here, we create a closure, which is what's going to be run when our uh, rule is called. And what's passed to this is three arguments, value, input, and args. So in this example, we're only going to be looking at value, but in a moment, we'll look at args, which is probably the most used. So inside of this closure then, we can either return true or false. So returning true means that this rule has passed and returning false mean that this rule means that this rule has failed. Obviously you wouldn't hard code that in. So you wouldn't say something like return true or return false. That would be silly, but you would do some kind of check in here that results in either true or false being returned. So in this case, all we need to do is return value being equal to apple. So all this will do is it will check this value, value being this, which is passed in uh, to our validate method. It will check if it's equal to the uh, to the text apple. If it is, then we uh, return true. If it's not, we return false, and therefore that fails. So let's go ahead and add this in here. And there's one last thing that we need to do before we run this, and that's add a custom uh, error message, because obviously uh, there's no default error message for is apple. So all we need to do is say add rule message. We add it for is apple. And then we can say something like that value must be apple. We could do that in double quotes. So what we can do is we've already seen placeholders being used. We could use placeholders in here if we wanted. So we could say uh, instead of this, we could say the field field must be apple you gave input now input is anything that the user has submitted through and you've passed into the validate method so let's take a look at this and refresh um, in fact no this is going to be value not input there we go so the username fields, so that's our first placeholder, must be Apple, you gave Billy. So let's go ahead and update this uh, validate method to include the username as Apple. And when we refresh, we obviously get no errors. So that's how we create a basic rule using uh, value that we get passed in, which is obviously the value of what we provide in our validate method. But now let's take a look at what we can do with our args. So for example, uh, we could say something like uh, is in or you know, something like that, what it, whatever, it doesn't really matter too much. And let's get rid of the contents of this and let's get rid of our rule message as well. And uh, we'll get rid of that for now too. 
So is in is basically going to check if the value that we provide is within the arguments that we give. So it would look like this when we use it is in and I could say something like one, two and three. And these are just comma separated values within parentheses and these are then translated and given to us within this args method here. So what I want to do is a var dump on args and that will give us them args out if we just refresh this. So you can see now that args has uh, one, two, and three, so we can use that as we want. Uh, obviously, these errors that we have here are basically due to the fact that we have no custom rule error message set up for is in. So let's uh, finish off our rule first. So all we need to do is say return in array value args. It's as simple as that. So because this is an array, we can check if the value that's provided here is within the array that we get from this, either one, two, or three. Really, really simple. And obviously, if you only had one argument being passed through, you could use uh, the array accessor to access the first key or however many keys you wanted to access. So let's just quickly add a rule message for is in. Um, must be either one, two, or three. So let's go ahead and refresh now. Must be in either one, two, or three. Currently at the moment, what we can't do is output all arguments. What I could do here is arg zero, arg one, or arg three. And that would give us, oh, sorry, arg two, because it's zero indexed like that. So using the arg and then the uh, the position of the argument you want, you can use that as a placeholder as well. But what you can't currently do is output all arguments. Uh, that's something that needs to be added to the code base, which will probably be done uh, very shortly. So for now, let's just go ahead and replace this as one, two or three. So we've now looked at adding custom rules within violin. What we're going to look at next is extending the violin class so we can add our own custom rules, but we can also then inject dependencies for our application. So for example, database dependencies, and then we can go ahead and look up things in the database within our rules. Uh, you can obviously do this within here, but it's a lot cleaner if you have uh, a validate method, uh, validate class, for example, that just extends violin and you can keep everything in there and it's nice and tidy. So if you need to do database validation to, for example, look up whether a username already exists, that will be in the next video.